Journey to the Western Vernacular, Chapter 32, Destroy France and Make Gods Persuade the King. The four masters and disciples of Tang Monk braved the heat and kept walking westward. One day, as they were on their way, an old woman holding a child walked out of the willow shade by the roadside and shouted to Tang Monk, Monk, hurry up and go east. Going west is a dead end. It turns out that the front is to destroy France. The king promised to kill 10,000 monks, and now only four are enough. Tang Monk asked her if he could take a detour instead of entering the city. The old woman said no. Wukong had piercing eyes. He recognized the Bodhisattva Guanyin and the boy Shan Kai, and knelt down in a hurry. Guanyin rides on the clouds and changes back to her original state. Tang Monk quickly knelt down and cowed out, and Baji and Sha Seng also knelt down quickly. Suddenly, auspicious clouds floated in the air, and Guanyin rode the clouds back to the South China Sea. The four masters and disciples discuss letting Wukong go to the city first, find a remote road, and pass through the city while the night is dark. Wukong rode a cloud to the sky above France, and turned into a lantern moth and flew along the street. He saw several businessmen in Wang Zhao's shop. After eating, he took off his clothes and headscarf, and went to bed each other. He thought in his heart got the idea. Wukong flew into the house, put out the lights, cast a spell, and returned to his master on the clouds with his clothes and headscarf. So the four masters and disciples took off their monk robes, put on secular clothes, put on turbans, dressed as horse merchants, and walked into the city. Wukong led his master and junior brother into a store diagonally opposite Wang Zhao's store. When the shopkeeper, Widow Zhao, saw that it was a horse dealer, she hurriedly asked people to kill chickens and geese, and cook food. Wukong hurriedly said, Today is our fasting day, you can kill it tomorrow. Make some vegetarian food first, and the price will be based on this. It was time to go to bed. They were afraid that their hats would fall off after they fell asleep, so they asked Widow Zhao if she wanted a darker room to sleep in. Widow Zhao's daughter asked her mother to give Tang Monk and his apprentice a large cabinet that was four feet wide, seven feet long, and three feet high. Wukong looked at the cabinet and was very satisfied. He asked the store owner to bring the white horse over and tie it up and lock the cabinet. Four people slept in the closet, you next to me, and I squeezed you, and we didn't fall asleep until midnight. But Wukong couldn't sleep, so he deliberately made trouble for Baji, and said that he made a total of 15,000 tails of silver from selling horses, this time. Unexpectedly, there happened to be a helper who was setting fire in this store, and he colluded with the robbers. After hearing this, he hurriedly went to report the news. After a while, more than 20 robbers came to the store with sticks and robbed them. They looked around in the store, but couldn't find the horse seller. They saw a large cabinet in the room, with a white horse tied to the legs. The lid was locked tightly. They thought it was gold and silver treasures, and tied it with a rope. Lift it up and go. The robbers killed the soldiers guarding the city and escaped from the city. After hearing the report, the general patrolling the city and the marshal of troops and horses took their troops and went out of the city to catch the thieves. Seeing the fierce attack of the army, the robbers did not dare to fight. They put down their cabinets, lost their white horses, and fled for their lives. The officers and soldiers carried the cabinet and led the white horse back to the general military mansion, preparing to report to the emperor at dawn. Wukong thought in the cabinet, if I open the cabinet tomorrow and destroy the French king, and see that we are monks, will we still be able to survive? Then he came up with an idea, turning the golden hoop into a three-pointed drill, and drilled a small hole at the bottom of the cabinet. Hole, then turned into an ant, climbed out of the hole, changed back to his original shape, and rode the clouds to the palace. At this time, everyone in the palace was asleep. Wukong used a clone method to pluck out all the hair on his left arm and turned into little Wukong. He also plucked out all the hair on his right arm and turned into sleepy bugs, which were distributed in the palace. The courtyard, five houses and six departments made them all sleep well, and asked little Wukong to shave everyone's hair. Wukong took back his hair and rode the cloud back to the general military mansion. He turned into an ant again, and got into the cabinet. The next day, the maids and eunuchs in the palace got up to wash themselves up, and found that none of them had hair. They were very alarmed. Unexpectedly, the queens of the third palace also had no hair. They hurriedly called the king. They were shocked to see that the king was also bald. Everyone was frightened out of their wits. The king issued a decree not to tell anyone about the hair loss in the palace, and then went to the palace. 
Unexpectedly, in the morning, the civil and military officials began to tell the story about the hair loss last night. Both the king and his ministers said, with tears in their eyes, from now on, I will never dare to kill the monk again. At this time, the patrolling soldiers reported that they had caught a thief and seized a stolen cabinet last night. The king ordered people to carry the cabinet to the Wuffing Tower. He ordered the cabinet to be opened. As soon as the cabinet lid was opened, Badgie couldn't help but jump out, startling the civil and military officials. Wukong slowly helped his master out, and Sha Monk also moved out his luggage. Baji saw the city patrol soldier holding the white horse and shouted, The horse is mine. When the king saw that they were four monks, he hurriedly stepped down from the throne to meet with the civil and military officials and asked about their origins. After Tang Monk explained them one by one, he also told what happened in the cabinet. The king said, Because a monk slandered me, I vowed to kill 10,000 monks. I didn't expect that. I became a monk last night. Please ask the elders to accept me as a disciple. Wukong smiled and said, Hey, we don't accept you as our apprentice. You should still be your emperor. Just change the customs for us, send us out of the city, and ensure that your country is rich and strong. The king obeyed the order and asked Tang Monk, changing the name of the country for him. Tang Monk changed Destroy France to Kin France. The king was overjoyed and hosted a banquet in honor of Tang Monk and his disciples. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.